I've been alive forever And I wrote the very first song I put the words and the melodies together I am music and I write the song Okay, Rita, so to be perfectly honest, I don't blame you for loving fan fiction. I'm just upset that you weren't around when I went into a deep three-day weekend hole reading about sexy Draco having gay sex with Harry Potter. I wish I could have been there to support you. <laughs> support me or take me out of the hole and be like, okay... Uh, Rainy, you need sunlight. Peanut butter <laughs> is not a perfect food. If I were a bad influence on each other, because I'd be like, keep reading. <laughs> I was just like, oh, oh my god, but what about Ron? You should be having gay sex with Ron, not Draco. <laughs> but actually, let's go back to having more slash fiction about <laughs> Harry Potter and Draco Malfoy. Now kiss for me. It's so funny because when I read the book, it never dawned on me. Like, it never would have occurred to me to have them have a relationship. Never dawned on me. I never could picture it. Oh, see, I, it never dawned on me either. But that is what's the great thing about fan fiction. You didn't know you needed, like, a gay sex scene between Picard <laughs> and Spock until you're reading it, and then you're just, like, eating all of your double-stuffed Oreos. Oh, so, good God, pun not intended. Pun so <laughs> not intended. <laughs> and then you're like, yeah, this is what I need. I remember, this is just a brief aside, this is still on fan fiction game now, I, um, after I watched Tangled about Rapunzel, mm -hmm. I am not proud of myself, but I, for some reason, became obsessed with fan fiction about it, and I remember that I found a whole horde of Disney fan fiction on a live journal page for Disney Kink, and I was shocked by how many people were a part of this, and I will never forget that I just accidentally stumbled upon, I swear to God, it was an accident, a story that involved Eric and Ursula and tentacle sex. And I was like, this is actually something that someone was like, I'm going to write fan fiction about. Like, it never <laughs> talked about Draco and Harry Potter never being in my mind. I was simultaneously <laughs> horrified, but intrigued. I was like, how are they going to make this? <laughs> I just want to point out that people have been asking us to come back and podcast and say like, oh, let please do another podcast. Halloween is coming up. And we're like, yeah, you know, we're going to come back, but we're going to talk about fan fiction. <laughs> I mean, is there anything scarier than <laughs> Ursula and Eric having sex, though? Yes, I accidentally stumbled upon gay Transformers fan fiction. My brain cannot, cannot even imagine that. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Underbelly is back. And today we're going to talk about fan fiction, where we are not intending to trash J.K. Rowling and why mm -hmm. she needs to let go of the Harry Potter universe. <laughs> but we are going to talk about J.K. Rowling fan fiction and why she needs to let go of the Harry Potter universe. Let it go. <laughs> Please let it go. Rita doesn't need to know about how wizards made their poop disappear. Yeah. I'm completely shocked by that. I had not heard that, and I am just... I, I am disappointed I in you. I'm disappointed in you. How dare you? How dare you not join me in this and being like, so, like, the poop disappear, but not the pee? Come on now. This is not a logically consistent universe, Joe. That That's how I talk to her in my head. It's like, Joe? Because we're like this. I know we're in a podcast and it's not a venue to show, like, my fingers crossed. 
<laughs> to indicate so my close. closeness, but th- they are. Maybe listen, you understand that they're very close. <laughs> Just so that we get it clear. I I also accidentally stumbled across a fan fiction about how the Kraken was having sex with Hogwarts, like the castle, and it involved tentacle sex, too, and it horrified me. What the fuck goes on in other people's minds? Like, I always think, I mean, I must have no imagination. I used to think I had an imagination. I don't think I do, because these things do not go through my mind. That's just shocking. I just oh, you know who also wrote a lot of good fan fiction? No, who? Saddam Hussein. Really? <laughs> For what fandom? <laughs> For him. <laughs> no, no, he wrote he wrote this erotic novel called Zabiba and the King, and the King was like basically Saddam Hussein. It, he w- it came from the same village that Sam- Saddam Hussein came from, and it was mm-hmm. like Zabiba saw him, and he was so tall, and he was so muscular, and he had such luxurious hair and a mighty beard. And I was like, dude, you were like rock hard while you were typing this, weren't you? I'm always alarmed by fan fiction that features real people so i just recently got into live pd that show on a and e about you know it's like cops but it's supposed to be more live and um i was looking up this guy that's on it sean sticks larkin mm-hmm. and I found that people wrote fan fiction about him people so this like this random tv show people are writing fan fiction about this real live cop who comes on and is interviewed sometimes on it and i was like I didn't realize how deep fan fiction ran. Oh, I, it, I was blown. It's what? deep. It is deep as fuck. Um, no, I mean, okay, so uh, in Literatica, I was, like, looking up some stuff, and there's, like, fan fiction about Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga, and it's like, why are you making, like an erotic novel about these two real people, which I think, isn't that libel, Rita? Isn't it libel or slander or something to be like, this is how they fuck? I just think it's weird because we don't know what they're like in real, like, the the reason why you like fan fiction is because you've already been settled into this universe, you know these, these <laughs> characters really well, and that's what makes it, so entertain like you don't want it to end and you read mm-hmm. you know state a story that maybe takes a different take on something that happened in the book or or the movie or um and so you kind of get to live through that or you know it continues on after the movie or the book is over and so that's exciting but like to write about people who are real i mean i have no idea what bradley cooper is like in real life i might not like him at all i don't i just think it's weird to write this whole thing about someone who's re- who's real yeah have, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not invested. In, in, I just think that's really strange. I don't know. That's yes. Maybe. Yes. And, you know, you are validating my fan fiction that I wrote when I was a child about how Jack didn't die at the end of Titanic. And I was there on a rowboat and I rescued him. And he's like, <laughs> you are so much cooler and nicer and better than Rose because you didn't let me die, Rain. <laughs> And then we wrote a carousel together. The end. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't think I've ever read any Titanic fan fiction. That might, might need to change. Uh, um, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you that my Titanic fan fiction will never see the light of day. And I'm planning on having it buried with me along with my Phantom of the Opera fan fiction. <laughs> Now I have read some good fans of the opera fan fiction. You you can actually follow my sad fan fiction of Phantom of the Opera every time the mass singer is on because I will fight that the only mass singer that counts is Eric, the Phantom of the Opera, my boyfriend and sometimes murderer. <laughs> He's the winner every week in my heart. Just a little fact that he's a bit of a murderer. And you know what? Gomez Adams makes his trains crash, and no one says anything about that. Sometimes you gotta just let a phantom phantom. 
Yeah. I I get it. I might also be a very enabling girlfriend, so <laughs> I have absolutely no boundaries and <laughs> Oh, you just killed someone. That's okay. You came, you had a bad past. <laughs> you know what? As long as you are not shitty to your Uber driver, Eric, I am okay with that. Little known fact, Eric always reviews all of his Uber drivers. Of course he does. See, I we're making see fan fiction right here. <laughs> but Rita has found two great series and tells me I need to read them so that I can join her in her quest for fan fiction as we find it. And yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm addicted. I'm not proud, but I, I'm, I've reached the point where I can't go back. So I don't know what to do. No, Rita, I'm- you be proud, okay? I tell everyone daily, no matter if I met you or you're a lifelong friend or you're my mentor, well, according to J.K. Rowling, before they got uh, indoor plumbing in Hogwarts, they just made their poop disappear. So, um, yeah, you know, my boss asks me, I just wanted to know if you had a good weekend, Rain. (laughs) You didn't need to tell me this. I'm like, you know what? Now you know. No, though. I don't know. I don't know what it is about fan fiction, though. I don't know what is so fulfilling about it. And I have to tell you that I had found uh, a long time ago an archive of our own. So I used to always just get my fan fiction purely through fanfiction.net. Mm-hmm. Same Z's. Yeah, yeah. This, but there's an archive of our own, which is pretty big. And I've found through Tumblr and stuff that people are obsessed with writing fan fiction solely on there. So. Um. Yeah, it, where do you think my fan fiction was posted? Was it fanfiction.net or an archive of our own? Archive of our own, which now won a Hugo Award. So on my CV, I am putting, I am, I am Hugo Award winning author, Rain. Congratulations. <laughs> You're going to send me this. I never read it. Why didn't you share it with me? Um, be- <laughs> because you're not reading my sad fan fiction, Rita. I'm going to find it. Never. <laughs> I will find it. But people, no, but it's like, I, you know, it's like for a long time, I think that people joked about fan fiction and mm-hmm. joked about reading it and that it was, you know, I mean, nobody really took it seriously. And I'm realizing, I mean, I real, I realized it before. I, I told you before that I'm not proud of myself, but I was kind of obsessed with Twilight fan fiction for a while. So let's not get into that. Just Rita, that just it. admit it. You are E.L. James, all right? You are a sad 50-year-old woman who doesn't know how masturbation works. It's okay. I still love you. I talk about my inner goddess all the time, so I guess it. Your inner goddess is doing the samba right now. <laughs> but there's, there's something I think that I realize that people really take fan fiction seriously, especially the writers they really go all out they really take their time to pace it and and i and i I think that that's something that's worth thinking about because i feel like a lot of successful authors today were fan fiction writers before i mean cassandra clare um we would not have draco in leather pants without her and that was a really totally sexual awakening on my part and probably why I like had that tough year where I was like hmm you don't call me you are moody as fuck we are so in love yeah all the signs of a successful relationship (laughs) you ignore me when I talk I am so in love already I picked out all the names of our three children but it's, you know, I mean, I think there's a, a place for it. And I, you know, I never read any Harry Potter fan fiction, but I know that there's a huge Harry Potter fan fiction community. I think it's probably one of the most, if not the most popular fandom to write for. That fan fiction has its place. And I can't help but being a little addicted. And I need to kind of move past this and perhaps read actual novels. But uh, I'll get there eventually. I I don't think it's actually bad to write fan fiction because as as a budding author, 
you get a lot of skills in fan fiction that you you need. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm talking in a purely academic sense, but like character building, plotting, pacing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think coming up with characters is probably one of the hardest things to do. So if you already have an established stable of characters, you can like put in a brand new character and see how it works. And yeah, play around with it. Yes, definitely. And fan fiction community is so supportive. I mean, not to say that like there aren't bad people there, but they're they're really supportive and you can get a lot of feedback if you listen to it, you know, that the constructive ones about how hey, you know, this is a self self insert character. Um, does your character really need to have purple eyes, my dear? <laughs> Um, hmm. your character's name is just one vowel different from yours. Is this a self-insert character? Oh, oh. It really lets you practice. You know, you kind of, you're taking out some of the hard things as a, as a new author that's sort of, that's just there for you to play with and you can practice and build on your skills and like you said it's a really supportive community so everybody comes back and gives you constructive criticism and you can get better at it yeah definitely um <laughs> it's fulfilling i guess to be uh how bad some some writing can be and just feel like but it's so bad it's like a bad movie you know it's so bad it's good yes definitely uh some some tv shows even like come off as fan fiction i mean the new riverdale reads yeah. like an Archie comics fan fiction. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's like an interesting debate about that because I remember for a while that for Twilight fan fiction, a bunch of uh, the stories that were written for Twilight were becoming published mm-hmm. in their own. So they would like change the couple, the names of the characters, you know, from Edward and Bella to whatever names they chose, but it was the very obviously still the same characters, and they would publish it under a new title and everything, and people on Goodreads were up in arms, flipping out about it, and saying that they wouldn't read and buy the novel, support the author at all, because it was fan fiction, and it had its own place, and it didn't belong in the published world, and then other people were like, how dare you, it is their own creation, of course it belongs in the published world, so it's mm-hmm. interesting, that I remember that was like a huge thing for a while, I'm not sure if that's still something that's debated but that was a big deal oh definitely i mean i know people talk about like every time there's a trend it's like you get 500 knockoffs you know like Mm -hmm. why something like um uh hunger games gets popular and then you get like a whole bunch of knockoffs Dystopian, you know. yeah, dystopian tales. And yeah, like, you know, I it's like it. it's old, like first person, present tense. Oh, angry. I am a plain girl, but suddenly <laughs> everybody loves me, you know. Or like you go to the grocery store and you find those bargain bin Disney versions. Yeah, and and it happens, and I I I for one totally love and support your binge into fan fiction, Rita, like, yes, give me, give me more of this and let me go see if I can find my old favorite Star Wars (laughs) fan fiction. But it's done really bad because what I ended up doing, I had a Tumblr account and I deleted Tumblr Mm -hmm. and I created a new Tumblr account Mm -hmm. because I want to follow all of the fan fiction authors. This is how bad I'm getting that I want to read the things that they put up on their Tumblr accounts as well. I need help. I need guidance. I need a light at the end of the tunnel. I need support. Please, someone help me. Okay, so the first Mm -hmm. one is The Captive Princes, right? The Captive Prince Trilogy by Mm -hmm. C.S. Pacat, I think is how she pronounces her name, Mm P-A-C-A-T. And it's, I don't know what the hell you call the genre, to be (laughs) honest with you. Um, (laughs) It's like alternative world fiction, right? Alternative world fiction, yeah. And she, what's actually interesting about her is she initially, and you know, this is an old series at this point now. I think that she was publishing them somewhere between 2014 to 2016. 
but um, she had started writing it on Live Journal, which I think is interesting. I love and, it. I love that. Yeah. And so she started publishing it. She got it self-published, and then it was picked up by Penguin, I believe. Mm-hmm. And it is, like, it's really good. She's a really good writer. The first book is a little tough, but once you get through it, and it's a MM romance, so mm-hmm. it's male and male. And it's interesting because before I read that, I wasn't sure if I would, like, I had never really read a book mm-hmm. about a male romance. So I was like, yeah, why not? And I read it and I was totally addicted by their love story. Like, I, I can't handle it. <laughs> it is horrible. <laughs> but it's really, it's like, what I, what I find uh, that I love about this book series and another book series I'm going to talk about in a second is that it's hard won romance. They go through so much. They have so much happen to them. And I think that part of the reason why I'm addicted is because I read a string of really terrible romance novels, contemporary romance novels that were heinous, even by our love, Lisa Clevis. <laughs> I reread some of her contemporary romance, and I was like, these all suck. They're terrible. The romance is, like, too easy, and it's just not believable, and it's just nauseating, and the writing is bad. So I had read, actually, the Captive Prince trilogy. I think I read it last year, so I reread it again, and I was – just astounded by it. like the world building is great. Her writing is great. The characters are great characterization there. They go through so much. And in the end, you know, I don't want to spoil anything, but that they get, they can, they develop ways to get through it. And it's just like, I don't know. I was, I was addicted. And then I also read the all for the game series by Nora Sakovic. Mm-hmm. And I'm not okay. <laughs> 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 again it's they're really complicated characters they go through a lot it's a little over the top sometimes but it's amazing and it's well written and again it's featuring a male male romance and they it's a hard one romance again and it's not like cliche in both series nobody ever says i love you they don't go they don't have these overly saccharine statements or, mm-hmm. or confessions or anything like that it's just really you, straightforward. you mean no one is talking in an aching voice no <laughs> so i i couldn't help myself so but what's actually interesting and i was going to bring this up before is that for the all for the game series by Nora Sakovic, she actually had a tumblr account and again this is an older series i think it was coming out around 2016 or something like that and she would get asks on Tumblr and she published them all and she w- organized them however you do it on Tumblr. I feel really old. And so she has them all organized in extra content. And people were getting mad, I think, because they weren't agreeing with the things that she was writing in her extra content. So it sort of goes along with what we're saying about J.K. Rowling about being able to let go of the series. I, I love extra content stuff. And there's a lot of people who are really excited that she shared all that stuff. So did she did she yeah, mention that yeah, someone I was can't get over the books? I'm not really <laughs> sure what I'm going to do. So were they like just upset with the ending or was it like me with J.K. Rowling going like, look, girl, there is no single Jewish person in Hogwarts in your original story. Just admit you were a white lady and you didn't have minorities. Stop doing this. People were mad that she said that the two characters, Andrew and Neil, mm-hmm. would never get married. People, mostly everybody was thrilled by the extra stuff that she wrote. And she was quite different from J.K. Rowling because she gave you, like, she said that she was really interested in the milestones of the characters, the way mm-hmm. that they got over their trauma and things like that. She didn't, you know, she didn't plan out every single detail that happened past the books, but the big things that they got to, then they worked toward and, and show their healing. And so somebody asked, do they get married? And she said no. And people, some people were upset by that because they were like, damn it, that doesn't fit into what we need. We need them to get married. And she was like, they just don't believe in it. I mean, you know what? I was reading this um, series for a while and some people got really mad that two characters weren't going to have children and this author has um, a Facebook group because I'm old and I'm still on Facebook. I know 
all the young people on the Facebook. But anyway, uh, some readers were like super mad at this author saying like, no, but they need to have a, children. And she's like, no, I, I just don't see them having it. And it's like this back and forth where they're like, no, see, having kids would help them get over their trauma. And she's like, no, there are two people who had to overcome a lot in their past and they're complete the way they are. They don't need to have kids. And it's just like, oh, my God, you know, like if you're not happy with it, write your own fan fiction where they have kids. Mm -hmm. Write your own fan yeah. fiction where the two princes have a have a marriage. Yeah. And Nora Sakazek was careful in when, in what she said, what she was like. You know, this is just my vision of what happens after the mm -hmm. books. You can create your own. Your she gives you her blessing to write fan fiction about it and create your own things. But someone was like, "In your mind, do they ever get married?" And she said, "No." Now, what's interesting about the Captive Prince trilogy, and I just think it's so interesting that I'm reading both that I read both series at the same time. Mm -hmm. C.S. Picot is not a fan of giving extra information after her third book came out she did a live stream mm -hmm. and people were asking questions and she was very careful she didn't give a lot of specific you know things like you know that went too far into the characters that weren't already mm -hmm. in the books or things that happened after the books ended because she felt like it wasn't her place she wanted the reader to experience it and it's so interesting about how there's those two schools of thought and some authors they created and they're very they have a lot of you know Mm -hmm. feel about how the book how the characters should behave and what happens and this is this is the way it is mm -hmm. it's black and white and then there's some authors who are like go for it go for it <laughs> well as long as no one is like Anne Rice who actually sent lawyers letters to people who wrote fan fiction about her characters from the vampire chronicles I did not know this yeah she like is very very protective about it she's not like oh you know please don't do this i don't like that like uh george r, r. martin is like it he doesn't understand fa fan fiction he said so you know like for him he's like you guys can make your own characters but he hasn't like sent legal letters cease and desist letters and rice like went to these people sharing fan fiction and was like i'm gonna sue you those are dark days. Dark days of fan fiction. It's fan fiction. You know, I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> and then people weren't, like, selling them. It was just like, oh, here, I posted a story about this. I feel like it's a compliment in a way. I, you know, I think sometimes it's a generational thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, if, if I had the skill, I would write fan fiction about Clayton and Whitney, where she, like, says, I realize you're an abusive asshole. I'm going to go to France and be with Nikki. The end. I don't know. I just, I, I, I can't imagine getting that worked up about it. Anne Rice needs to take a chill pill. I wonder what she thinks about it now. Is there, is it, is there any, like, interview with a vampire uh, fan fiction out there? I, I don't know. I've actually regressed. And I'm reading, I was, not recently, it was a while ago, but the last fan fiction I read was actually Transformers fan fiction about Starscream and Negatron. I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I was just like, what is the sound of two Decepticons fucking? <laughs> I'm looking for something to do with the vampire right now on fanfiction.net. Let's see. Okay. It's but, not here. But you know who also hates fanfiction of her characters? Her beloved, totally original, not stolen from anyone fanfiction, E.L. James. Is there fanfiction about... Why would you write... Come on, guys. Why would you write fanfiction about Fifty Shades of Grey? I don't know, but, like, there there are a lot of people who love Fifty Shades of Grey. Hashtag no kink shame. Uh, it is not for me. No, it's not about the... It, it's, 
just terribly written. It is the worst, one of the worst fucking things I've ever read. But so I genuinely don't understand taking time and energy to write any more about these characters. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what? I don't know. But Whatever. but the sheer hypocrisy because she started out writing Twilight fan fiction and yeah. Stephanie Myers is you know I feel really bad how we trashed her because she is such a nice lady and she could have stopped E.L. James from happening she could have but she didn't because she was a nice lady and was just like okay go ahead. I actually have a contraband copy of Master of the Universe, her original unedited Fifty Shades. Oh, I think you told me that. That sounds familiar. Is it good? No. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I don't even hesitate. No. <laughs> With the vampire, it never dawned on me before, but I yeah. just can't imagine. a lot of effort. Do you know there's also One Direction fan fiction? I'm not shocked. Okay, but have you read fan fiction that crosses into other universes? Yes. Okay. I read a fan fiction about One Direction meets The Purge. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking weird. One direction more so just, just like those virginal boy brand boy band world. Yes. So like okay, for for people who haven't watched The Purge, number one, stop listening to us. Go watch The Purge because it is wonderful. I mean it's terrible, but it's also wonderful. But in this world where crime is le- – all crime is legal, right? All crimes are legal for 24 hours. One Direction exists, and either they are being kidnapped or they are committing crimes, and they meet some teenage girl who they inexplicably – oh, stop laughing at me. Stop laughing at me. You're distracting me, Rita. <laughs> inexplicably they all fall in love with one girl and it gets kinky and the purge is still happening but you know it's like oh Liam is like depressed and is like a drug addict and it's it's what oh my god I have so many things to send you I have to send you my immortal I have to send you one direction meets the purge I have so many things to send to you I don't know what to say. I, you know, and it's funny because I love The Purge, mm-hmm. but again, it would never have dawned on me to look up the pawn, uh, the, uh, the pawn, oh my God, The Purge fan fiction. Yes. Why are you, see, see, you should not tell me these things, Rita, because I'll be like, what? You love this too. Let me send you more fan fiction. <laughs> Let me enable you. <laughs> I'm like, how do you sit and say, hmm, I don't feel like writing today. You know what I'm going to write? I'm going to write the one direction in the purge. Are you making fun of my reading habits? I have been nothing but loving and supportive for your fan fiction Tumblr needs. And yet you're just like, read. <laughs> how do you come up with it? But can I ask you them? How did you find it? Well, there's, <laughs> there's this thing. I want to know. Did you look up One Direction or The Purge? What did you do? Well, there's this wonderful thing called Wattpad, and then you just like look up top stories, and you're just like, what the fuck? When you read the description, and you're like me, going like, you know what? I think I still have two working brain cells left. Let me go find this. <laughs> and then you never talk to someone else because you remember how your parents hated you for assaulting guests as they walk through the door and go, before you enter, let me read you this chapter from <laughs> Judith McNaught's Whitney, My Love, and you explain this to me. <laughs> oh, my God. And then... I'm... <laughs> 
And then, and then you try to tell Rita about this, but you can't <laughs> talk to her for a couple of days. And then you just forget because you want to pretend that those two weeks never happened. <laughs> that, that, that is what ha- I hope. I hope you're happy. I hope you're happy, Rita. You made me explain my shame to you. I support you. I'll never judge you. <laughs> I'm serving you a little bit for One Direction and The Purge, but not 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 too much. I just want to know how you found it. Jealous. Watch out for crossed fandoms. Oh, you know what would be like an awesome fandom to cross? Uh, the Fast and the Furious meets the Marvel Universe fan fiction. That would be intense. It's like, oh, yes. Okay. I I found it, and, like, it even has a little made-up cover and everything, so beware, Rita. I'm sending it to you. Oh, yeah, if if you think fanfiction.net has scary fanfiction, wait till you see Wattpad. <laughs> it's coming at you. Oh, no. Oh, we should do, we should do a podcast where we're just reading this. We're just reading this to, to each other. Oh, we should do that for our Halloween. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm so sorry to the nice people who asked us to come back and was like, oh, it's it's Halloween. You guys are known for your love of serial killers and horror movies. What are you going to do? And it's like the most terrifying thing of all. One Direction meets the Purge fan fiction. Did you get it? I sent it to you. Um, oh, I hope I sent it to you. I, su- I I wrote something really vile and suggestive, and I thought I was sending it to you, but I sent it to my friend Matt, and he was like, what did you just send me? I'm constantly sending the wrong things to people. I shouldn't be allowed to uh, text. I didn't get it yet. I shouldn't be allowed near technology. It's just amazing to me the things, like, you can take the most wholesome, like I said before, The Little Mermaid, and turn it into the most bizarre, kinky, distorted, disturbing story. I just don't, I don't know where people get these ideas from, but I'm a little jealous. I have to be honest with you, because I just wish I had that creativity, and I don't. Um... I know, like something so wholesome and beautiful, like the purge, and then you just blend it with something so disgusting as One Direction. It's just funny. Like, I wonder what what put that spark in that person's mind. They were like, you know what? The world needs cocaine, <laughs> Rita. Whenever you're confused, it's always cocaine. Just mountains of it. Oh, I wonder if I wonder if there's a Scarface meets the Purge fan fiction. Oh, I got it. Okay, the Purge. <laughs> it's real. Why does no one believe me? See, no one believes me when I tell them things, and then they look it up and they're like, "What the fuck." The annual purge kills hundreds, maybe thousands every year. I don't know why we still do it. People are stupid and insane. Killing innocent, even going after homeless and children. (laughs) None of this is grammatically correct either. Killing innocent, (laughs) even going after homeless and children. I have never. Just one homeless. Just one homeless. I love that. It just implies there's just one homeless. At the table of contents, and they've got seven chapters, and then they've got end, and then in parentheses, kind of maybe. <laughs> I just love, you know, like, ooh, there might be more. Oh, wait, I'm gonna send you all of them because, like, I have, I have so many, I have so many to send you. Have I just lost you completely? Are you just like <laughs> scrolling through all of the fan fiction of One Direction meets The Purge? <laughs> I can't. What I wanted to do is it has 193 votes. Is that good? Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Okay, so you know how on an archive of our own, uh-huh. you kind of go by kudos. Yeah, or at least I do. I feel like yeah. kudos is more valuable than kudos, right? Yeah. So like, I filter 
from this is really sad that I had a system for this now, too, mm-hmm. but I sort and filter from kudos level. Mm-hmm. And then on fanfiction.net, I usually go by the reviews because I feel like they're more hard ones. So I want to mm-hmm. see, you know, you want the harder the ones. Yeah. Yeah. So, but like, obviously now that you've introduced me to Wattpad, I don't know what I'm doing. So I need to <laughs> one direction good. Is that, is this is acceptable? I'm not sure. I, uh, I broke my boss's head on Friday when I told him that Chronicles of Narnia is just C.S. Lewis's Bible fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? I'm like, yeah. I mean, Kind of true. I was like, duh. And he's like, go, go teach your classes. Go. So I opened up the Purge fan fiction. Mm-hmm. Did you read this and think it was good? No. <laughs> no. It's so bad. No, they, it's bad, but it's hilarious. Okay, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Rita, we need to go through life with the confidence of a 13-year-old girl writing One Direction Meets the Purge fan fiction. I'm dying. Someone in person, I'm dying. They included a character named Jacob. Mm-hmm. And someone wrote in the comments, wait, Jacob, like Twilight Jacob? Who hurt you? <laughs> I, I, I will never forgive you for introducing this to me. Never I'm forgive me, or you will never love me more for introducing this to you. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. This is exactly what I needed. So, you said you needed help. You said you needed to stop reading the fan fiction of those two literary works. You're welcome. I think I have, I just, I don't understand my obsession. So, I get really obsessed with books or movies that I've seen that I really like. And this is going on for too long. I need to branch out, but at the same time, I don't want to leave them behind. I want to keep reading. I don't want that. I don't want their story to end. Their story ends and I forget them and to get over it. But I need you to read them because I think this is also, this is part of my obsession. I have no one to talk about them with. I need you. Like nobody else will read this shit. You're the only person that I know <laughs> who will read it accept it and talk about it with me so please i'm begging you as your friend please read these fucking series so that i can fucking get over it it's like i have a haunting in my mind i'm haunted by them okay all right you are reading purge one direction fan fiction of course i'm going to fucking read the captive princess (laughs) and all for the game and all for for the the game game. You need to do it. I will, okay? Because I think I just sent you down a terrifying rabbit hole. <laughs> you did too. Of one I'll never recover from. <laughs> <laughs> or one that is going to make you strong. You know, like, if you get smallpox once and you don't die, you are safe for the rest of your life. <laughs> Everything that I face after this, I can be like, I read The Purge, One Direction, fan fiction. What have you done lately, okay? I am strong. I no longer fear hell because I've read The Purge, One Direction, fan fiction. I have to tell you that I don't even really know all of One Direction's names. I I know Liam and Henry, and that's it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I will read this fan fiction. Mm-hmm. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay, so this is our wonderful dive into fan fiction. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's not our typical podcast episode, but we haven't podcasted for a while. So it's going to take us time. But um, Rita and I are promising to try to do our Halloween podcast because i guess that's what we're known for i don't know what the hell we'll do it on um we still have to finish the um the one that we started the um black christmas i think Mm -hmm. okay So, so we still have all the notes for that and i promise 
that I will not mention One Direction versus and the Purge too much for that episode. I I can't guarantee yeah, I it. I can't promise that I won't mention it. But um, ooh, read Black Christmas fan fiction. I wonder if you're is there a Black Christmas meets Scooby Doo fan fiction? <laughs> There's, oh, a, that's so alarming. <laughs> there's a fan fiction for everything, Rita. <laughs> there's a fan fiction yeah. for everything. But um we we will try. And um uh, at the very least, Rita and I will keep you guys updated on what we are reading if you follow us on Twitter. I'm at Rainy Scribbles in the Margins. She is going, she is at Girl in the Moon 7. Please follow us on Twitter. Um, we are two extremely lazy people. So if you do want us to do a Halloween podcast, remind us because we are deeply Catholic and the guilt will kill us. It's the way she walked Straight into my heart and stole it Through the doors and past the guards Just like she already owned it I said, can you give it back to me? She said, never in your wild